Our last speaker is a local trans woman, writer, poet, an activist from the Providence community. Born and raised in Providence, she spent two years creative writing in New York City, as well as a semester abroad in Rio de Janeiro, where she made uh, the leap to begin her transition. Since moving back to Providence last year, she has gotten reacquainted with the queer community in her city, specifically with the help of the po Providence Poetry Slam. Her creative work is a testament to her path to womanhood, which has been a journey uh, towards unapologetic messiness vulnerability, and truth in her own words. She now focuses her time on curating her voice and social media presence to be one of inclusivity, honesty, love, and hope for trans and queer youth, both in Providence and around the world. Please welcome Nika Lamazo. In the six months since 2017 began, 12 people in our community have been brutally taken from us. The majority of them were trans women of color. This doesn't include the countless trans people who have taken their lives, which, let's be clear, is state-sanctioned murder. When we live in a society that invalidates our identities both socially and legally, a government that rejects us and attacks us, and a society which has refused to pass a single hate crime protection law for trans people, suicide is indeed murder by that society. The majority of these victims were trans women, the even greater majority being trans women of color. When trans visibility or the trans tipping point was coined in 2015, it also became the unsafest year for trans people in this country since such, such, since such crimes began being reported. And this is where my story diverges from so many in my community. As I stand up here today, I realize that while time and time again my sisters are murdered, I will continue to be safe. Undying love from my family and acceptance from my community, my whiteness, my income, my access to health care and surgeries, my ability to pass, which deems me acceptable and desirable through the eyes of our cis-centric society, all make it so that my journey is safer and more normalized. When people ask me when I knew I was trans, it takes me a while to respond. The reason being that I never knew I was trans. I didn't even have that word in my vocabulary until college. I simply knew I was a girl. I knew it, but the people around me didn't. And my parents' love for me also meant they wanted to keep me safe. So they began correcting me from when I was five, to straighten my wrists, to attempt to hang out with boys, to dress differently, etc. Yet at the same time, they were shuffling me back and forth to acting classes and buying me Little Mermaid dolls for Christmas. Thus, this is how many parents and families deal with a trans child. It's an endless battle between compromises. If I give my kid the doll, but I don't allow her to grow her hair out, then she'll have less of a time being hurt. When I finally did make the decision to transition, I was 20. It was single-handedly the scariest and most freeing experience of my life. As I watched the season finale of the hit Amazon show, Transparent, I began sobbing. I couldn't really figure out why, and then I started sobbing even more. And then, through the muffled sobs, I heard myself say, just do it. And so I went into the bathroom, grabbed a razor, and began shaving my face and my legs. Within a few days, everyone knew who I really was, and not one person rejected me. Yet even with the love I received, the total acceptance in space to be myself, Nika, the woman I always was. I still felt shame and anger. I was full of disgust for myself, but another part of me knew it was my birthright to be respected and seen as the woman I am. My identity was not only in flux, but also in constant battle with one another. Disgust to rage and back again. The years I had spent internalizing my trauma had manifested itself into a formula that was causing me to push away everyone friends, family, myself. 
And so, like the little girl who would retreat into herself, I began doing it again at 20 and 21. But I can say today that I'm no longer that girl, but rather a happy, loud, unapologetic woman. But let me be clear, my story of love and acceptance, of relative ease and transitioning physically and medically, that is not the story that represents our community. Trans youth are two times more likely to be kicked out of their homes, and the same goes for trans and gender non-conforming youth who will kill themselves. Standing up here, I realize my privilege, that my voice holds more weight than other trans people because of my place in society. That because I have been so open and found happiness at long last, that cis people may be led to believe this is how it works for all trans people. But we must be adamant about realizing that there is no singular trans experience. We do not exist in a vacuum. Currently, there is an attack on trans people in this country. Visibility is beautiful, but without legalized protections, it's simply a manhunt until we no longer exist. We are resilient and we've been here forever. Without our transcestors like Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera, we wouldn't be standing here today. The first Pride was a riot started by trans women of color. They were the sheroes who threw the first brick. Yet, since the Stonewall Riots of 1969, trans people have been forgotten, turned away from the movement, and left out. It's our time. If no one is going to pass us the mic, we will rip it out of their hands and take our place at the front of this movement where we rightfully belong. Today and every day, I will fight for trans and queer youth until my dying breath. We did not get our rights because the Supreme, the Supreme Court handed them to us. We fought for our rights by throwing bricks and fighting the institutions created to hold us down. Let me close with the words of the great trans activist and writer Janet Mock, a voice which has guided me through my transition and given me the light and inspiration to, con to continue to thrive and survive. Quote, I believe that telling our stories, first to ourselves and then to one another and the world, is a revolutionary act. It is an act that can be met with hostility, exclusion, and violence. It can also lead to love, understanding, transcendence, and community. Thank you.